Hi everybody, welcome to our Cessna 210L landing gear electrical system series. This is part one of a five part series. We're using a plane in the shop here that's taken apart for some maintenance obviously. One thing we want to start with though is a caution to be sure and pull the 30 amp hydraulic pump circuit breaker just to prevent the pump from running while we're working on the airplane. We'll take a look at the wiring diagram so you can see why. Let's zoom in here to see that pulling the circuit breaker prevents electrical power from passing through along this wire to the pump relay so that if the relay gets energized, power won't be continuing to the pump motor located here. If the breaker is not pulled, then the pump will operate and suddenly close the landing gear doors. It will be uncomfortable for anyone that might be working inside the wheel wells. We'll zoom out to see the path we just followed. Also note that the manual doesn't illustrate the various switches to represent any particular landing gear position or operation. We've modified the diagram to show the landing gear in the down and locked position with the airplane on the ground. The 210L landing gear control system starts with electrical power at the main bus. From there, power continues through the 5 amp breaker located on the instrument panel, supplying power for control and indication of the system. Power then runs to a terminal strip in the nose wheel well. The closed nose gear downlock switch, back to the terminal strip, then to a second terminal strip mounted on the bulkhead between the two main gear downlocks in the belly of the plane, to the closed left main gear downlock switch, back to the terminal strip, through the closed right main gear downlock switch, and back to the terminal strip. Now power goes to the landing gear position select switch on the instrument panel. With the switch in the down position, electrical power goes in two directions. First it travels to the green landing gear downlock indicator light. The light illuminates only when all the needed switches are engaged for full gear down and locked indication. The second path is more difficult to see in the wiring diagram, but it travels from the select switch along to pin 4 of the power pack. From there into the power pack to energize the door valve solenoid. With power applied, this solenoid is energized to position a hydraulic valve that sends hydraulic pressure to close the landing gear doors. After the doors close, Hydraulic pressure builds to the 1500 PSI limit, causing the pressure switch to open, de-energizing the pump relay. This stops the electric motor. And that's it. The down and lock cycle is now complete. Let's have another look through the operation with a video of the component locations shown on the right side of the screen. We'll start with the 30 amp hydraulic power pack circuit breaker located in the center console. Then over to the right side of the center console, there are the co-pilot's rudder pedals. There's the power pack motor, and then just above that is the relay for the power pack. Then again on the right side of the center console, the pump below, and then there's the electric motor. Be careful. So we'll start at the main bus bar where the 5 amp circuit breaker is located for indication and control of the landing gear system. And from there we'll go up into the nose wheel well up at the top. A lot of environmental issues up in here for wiring. From that terminal strip we'll go down to the nose gear downlock switch. We'll pull out a little bit so you can kind of see where that's located just below the engine, back up to that same terminal strip in the nose wheel well, then to the second one underneath the floor, a little more difficult to get to, as you can see here, very conveniently located. All three of those terminals are only for the down and lock switches. So there's the left hand down lock switch on the left main gear at the pivot assembly. back to the terminal strip and the right one looks just like the left but it's on the right side gear saddle pivot assembly and the gear leg and back to the terminal strip 
From there we'll go to the gear select switch mounted in the instrument panel. Access to the wiring connections on the back side is very, very difficult. And of course the green down indicator light. With the throttle back you can push the light in and get the gear warning sound as a test. The second path again, difficult to see on the schematic. It goes from the center conductor of the switch over to pin 4 which is a connection for the power pack and the uh, door valve is mounted on the power pack which very difficult to see here. So that's the end of part one. I hope you found it helpful and we'll look for you again on part two which will show the landing gear in transit towards the gear up and locked position. See you then.